Good afternoon everyone, welcome back to the Trinity House in London. Another fantastic turnout as we move towards, in my opinion, the, the show of the year, one of the best shows I've seen in British boxing, December the 12th, Bad Intentions, brought to you live and exclusive with our partners here on Sky and sponsored by William Hill Vegas. This is a huge night of boxing. We were here last week for the Dillian White, Anthony Joshua press conference. Some great content filmed after that as well on Sky Sports with the gloves are off. Uh, you're going to enjoy watching that. And today we're here really to talk about the Chief Support bout for that night. A huge fight and uh, a lot of fun. These are the fights I think as a promoter, as a fan, you really want to be involved with because take away the banter, the animosity, the hype and strip it all away and you have a very important fight in the 160 pound division. You have a fight here, final eliminator for the WBA middleweight title where the winner will become the mandatory challenger to the winner of Daniel Jacobs against Peter Quillen which is a week before. So a fun fight, a great fight between two of the top middleweights in the world but more importantly a huge fight for both contestants as they move towards a shot at the world title. Obviously we're going to hear from both teams and camps. Firstly, I'm going to pass over to Adam Smith, the head of boxing at Sky Sports, our exclusive broadcast partner. Thanks very much, Eddie. We sat here yeah, uh, a week or so ago with Anthony Joshua and Dylan White, and I said then that we want these matches. We want these, uh, you know, these unbeaten's going in at each other. We want uh, classic fights. Uh, Rocky Fielding and Callum Smith on paper was exactly that last weekend, and Callum Smith made a superb, sizzling statement, didn't he, uh, to prove that he is going on and on in this sport. And maybe that did come down to levels. Who knows? This is another fabulous one. Um, Chris Eubank Jr, so much uh, attention on him, uh, really, really pleased to have him on Sky and, uh, uh, and have the, uh, the debut on Sky the other week in Sheffield, which was a, an entertaining evening, um, but really, really uh, looking forward to this against Spike O'Sullivan, who I've known for quite a long time. Um, he's a great guy, he's a great fighter, he's got a great team around him. Uh, always had a soft spot for the Irish and it's uh, fantastic sort of going back to the days of Steve Collins and Chris's dad in Mill Street. We were reminiscing earlier, I took Steve uh, back to Mill Street last year uh, and back to Cork as well and um, there were nothing like those fights were fantastic and I really think on December the 12th we're going to have a humdinger here between uh, Chris Eubank Jr. and Spike O'Sullivan. There's, uh, there's plenty of needle we know between the pair. Uh, they both can fight. They both uh, are very, very tough guys, and uh, this is going to be a, uh, a big one and a real introduction to the middleweight division because the future is very, very bright for the winner in 2016, uh, and it's one I can't wait to be ringside for. Thanks, Adam. Firstly, to uh, Team O'Sullivan, and I'm delighted to welcome former world champion Steve Collins to the top table here today. Steve, obviously, everybody knows the history now, firmly on the team of Spike and looking forward to what should be a great, great fight. Absolutely, yeah. I've no doubt that uh, all of these guys, when there was a draw, will definitely contend for World Championship title belts. They're both great fighters, it's a great match. Um, every element is there to excite the fans. It's really hard to pick a winner. I obviously am biased, and I will go with Spike because I put it down to Spike's experience and the great coaching he has. But really, it's a terrific match, and whoever wants it the most on the night is going to be, is going to be the winner. And it's something that I'm looking forward to. Obviously, your brother, head trainer, and Spike, very confident, colourful character, and, and can really punch as well. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, well, he, uh, Spike likes knocking people out. He can fight, he can box. Um, he's looking for big fights, other people avoid because he can hit so hard. So, you know, respect to Chris. Um, Respect the score, you respect the matchup, put the fight on, it's great. I think it's time now Spike to start making a few more balls also, so he, uh, he's going to win this fight. That's, you know, he's going to win this fight and then fight for world title, win a world title, I've no doubt. Pascal, obviously, you know, when we signed 
Chris Eubank Jr., you were straight on looking for this fight. It's a fight that you've wanted for a while. It's a fight you accepted very quickly. Yeah, it's, it's not pair towards Chris. He's a big name because of his dad. So you got to go after the big names to, to get the money. And uh, Spice has been in this game for eight years. You know, he's been left sitting sit in the fence with other promoters. He's been uh, used. He was trying the big fights, like sitting on the, the fence for like 12, 14 months. He took the fight, he needed the money. But now that uh, Sky and, and, and yourselves have uh, Chrissy, I think, uh, sorry, Chris, Chris, sorry, sorry, not disrespect. Um, Chris, I think um, it's good for Spike because it will actually showcase him. Plus, Sky have had Spike on his last two fights also, and people can see how good he is, how, how hard he hits. Um, you know, and the one bad fight Spike had was against Billy Joe, and he, like Spike admitted that he stunk that night because he knows he's ten times better than the fight he is. People are comparing how, how Chris done against Billy Joe. Billy Joe's win the fight easy enough that he let Chris back in, you know. But uh, Spike is ten times better for it, and, and Adam, you know, you've been there, Eddie, you've been there in America, like to see how hard he hits. And, but but these are the big fights we need, and Chris Eubank is a big name, and we're going after him because. You know, there's, there's big money involved, there's big fights involved. It's no person, absolutely no person. You know, he's a good kid, he can fight. And I wish him all the respect to him and his coaches. Let's go, final question. Obviously, we know you're a huge student of the game and tactically always spot on. How do you see this fight playing out and what will be the difference on December the 12th? I, I uh, well, they brought in a new coach, Adam, and uh, so. It, <laughs> We have the blueprint to beat the Eubanks, we've done it twice, so we got the blueprint, so it's going to happen on the night, Spike's going to win, you'll find out how he wins, and people say, wow, I didn't see that coming, but uh, it's about a game plan, and I'm not going to give too much away, the, the, the one thing I will credit Chris Eubank Jr. of having, he's very fit, he throws lots of punches, his game, if he's got the, the genes of his dad, he's got a really good chin, his dad's a real tough, tough, hard man, but I've never in my life, I've been around the game for so long, I've been in America with Petronelli's, the Roaches, my brother Steve in training camp, I've never experienced anything that hit so hard as I did Spike. Now Spike is confident coming off five knockout wins. And uh, you know, full, full praise and full credit to Chris for taking this fight and uh, wish him the best of luck on the way. Thank you. Ronnie, obviously history flowing all through this table for you and uh, I know you love a great fight and I know that you're looking forward to December 12th as well. Yeah, it was great to see Steve and Pastor again and I was very close to him. I, I always worry a little bit about things like that because I always remember um, when you bank full Collins, Steve, and um, I said to him after five rounds, don't worry mate, he won't keep this up, he won't keep this up, but he did, he got stronger and stronger. So we are expecting a very really hard fight, it's going to be a special fight, I'm really looking forward to it, the training's going well. He's only just spoke, so he's 100%. So, um, yeah, it'll be good. Adam, um, obviously much more involved in this fight and camp than the last fight. Um, plenty more time for you to work with Chris. And um, when we discussed the fight, it was one that you fancied, one that you knew was a great fight for Sky and the fans as well. Yeah, and it was a fight that Chris wanted. Um, and I agree with everything that everybody said on this table, this, this is a, uh, such a great matchup with Spike because Spike is such a strong, shrewd, hard-hitting middleweight who's seasoned now, he's been, he's been around the block and he's picked up the knowledge that you need to be able to cope with different moments in different fights, which is why this makes this a great matchup, but I do believe, and the reason why I'm here, I do believe that Chris is special. I think that on top of the the obvious ingredients that both the fighters have in this fight. I just think that, and I believe that Chris has that special element that will only get shown when you put the test in front of him, which is why Spike and, and Chris are now fighting, because Spike is a genuine, world, world-class middleweight. I agree with Steve. Um, he will eventually go on to fight for a world title and win a world title, but at this, at this point in time, I don't see him beating Junior because Chris Junior is something special. Obviously, there'll be a huge amount of tension around this fight, you can see by the turnout today and the build-up programs as well. Important that he's in the correct frame of mind, obviously, mentally and physically going into this fight because there's a lot on the line and obviously there's going to be a lot of tension on the fight itself. The one thing that Chris has is 
the right frame of mind day in, day out, even when he's not in the gym, he carries that frame of mind of a fighter where fighting is not an emotional stress to him, it's something that he lusts after. So his frame of mind, I have absolutely zero concern. Spike, obviously uh, this is a fight you've wanted for a long time. Follow you on social media, very entertaining. And I know you can't wait for December 12th. Absolutely, firstly I'd like to uh, thank yourself uh, Matt Trump for uh, making this fight and uh, the sky as well and my own promotion company, uh, Murphy's Box in the USA. Um, I'm delighted to be here, I'm thriving on it. I'm really enjoying myself and I can't wait for December 12th. I'm gonna put on a show for the boxing public on the 12th of December. I'm gonna knock out this kid next time. Obviously, we've, we've seen that prediction a number of times. You, you firmly believe that's the way that victory will come in this fight? 100%. I will beat him and I will knock him up. Obviously, um, the biggest fight you've been involved with as well, from a profile perspective as well. You've got the experience now boxing over in America. You've come a long way in a short period of time. Great win against Anthony Fitzgerald as well. But have a great, you know, you're on a great roll now going into this fight. And, and is that confidence? Really, what's making you so sure of victory on the top? Well, the bigger the occasion, the better I perform. Um, I love the big occasion, the lights, the bright lights. Absolutely love it. Love fighting that sky. Just cannot wait for it. Chris, obviously a very quick win over Tony Jetta recently, a couple of days off, and have been back in the gym. And now a fight that is very important to your progression in becoming a world middleweight champion. Yeah, this, is, uh, this is the next step. and. Uh, Gary over there is the man that put in front of me. Um, it's going to be a hell of a show. He's, uh, he's a come forward fighter, and um, I think he's going to be. Uh, his one dimension is to come forward and throw punches, and uh, you know everyone's talking about his power and how he knocks people out. If, if that's what he's relying on to beat me, then uh, it's going to be it's going to be a short night. He's going to be walking up to a lot of punches and uh, it's going to be great for the fans to see. Obviously, again, this is a fight that's going to create a lot of attention. The kind of nights and the kind of fights that, that you want to be involved in. Of course, you know, these, uh, these type of fights, uh, fights that the public demand, the public are interested in. Um, you know, I don't want to be going in there with Tony Jettas. You know, that, that, was, uh, that was a disappointing fight, really. You know, I want to be in there with somebody that wants to win and wants to put on a great show for the fans. And uh, I'm sure Gary's going to go in there and try his best. Unfortunately, then it won't be enough, but you know, I'm sure he'll put on a decent show. Obviously, he's coming with a mentality, as we've seen, to, to knock you out. How do you see the fight playing out? Um, I know you have your tactics with Adam, but, but you must have, uh, have watched Spike and seen him and, and had in your mind how this fight plays out and, and the method of victory for you. Like I said, I see him as a, as a one-dimensional fighter. He relies a lot on uh, you know, coming forward and uh, you know, throwing power shots. That's, that's all he really, that's all I really see in, in this arsenal. And he's doing that against uh, you know, low-level fighters. Uh, he's never been in the ring with somebody like me. Uh, and you know, when, once he realizes that his, his slow power shots aren't going to be connecting with me, He's, uh, he's going to run out of ideas, and that's why I'm going to take over and stop him. The fight won't go 12 rounds. Thank you. Spike, any comments there? Obviously, uh, both confident of that, that victory inside the distance. I don't care what he says. I'm going to beat him. Simple. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. You know, it's a shame because online, on Twitter, for the last few years, we've been, we've been so vocal. You know, we've been saying all these disrespectful and dark things to me over the years to try and get under my skin. But now, you know, you're on the big stage and all you can say is I'm going to knock him out and I'm going to win. Come on, let's, let's put on a show for these guys here. Let's, let's hear some more. I am going to win, Chris. And so I got the fight. I got the fight. I'm happy. Say some of the things you've been talking about on Twitter. There's no need for any help. It's like you're a different guy. It's like you're a different guy. Now you're, now you're Mr. Nice Guy. What happened to all the, the disgusting things you've been talking about all over the last few years? Let's uh, tell the public how you are. I don't, I don't know what's wrong. I don't care what you're saying, I'm going to beat you. Okay. Well, that's a shame, you know, that, that, that was the one thing with, you, you know, you're the same as Saunders. Saunders would, you know, had a very strong mouth on him, but the difference between you and Saunders is he would say it to me, he would say it to my face, he would say it to the public, that's just the guy he is. It seems like you're kind of a fake. It's just business to me.
Just business. Your business is looking pretty poor right now, so. Sorry to say. I don't care what you say. I'm just gonna make you. Well, there you go, guys. Keyboard warrior over here. That's what we've we discovered today. Um, Twitter terrorist, but when he actually comes to the big stage, he hasn't got much to say for himself. It's a shame. I thought he was going to get the, get some excitement going on. And, uh, I guess not. Sorry, I'd like to jump in there. Actually, the Twitter has got spiked this big fight. We've probably got his best heyday so far. So, you know, I think that's that was the angle, Chris. Like I said, it's I don't do Twitter. I think it's a lot of shit to be honest with you. Um, it's about two fight men. He's, he's a both got the ring now. Spike needed to do this because. You know, when it comes to the UK, a lot of us Irish foreigners, you know, it's kind of looked, up, looked over, um, which is okay because we don't sell tickets in the UK, but we re <laughs> if, it, if it meant him jumping on Twitter and promoting himself, if there was disgusting things said, I don't agree with it, I don't respect it, but you're both here now, the fight is going to happen, and as I say, Spice getting this big payday by far, so, you know, the, the, obviously his plan was to get you here, and he's got you here, um, you know, Spice... And after that, that's, you know, he's got you here, he's kind of worked, but... He's dug himself a very, very big hole, which he will not come out. Yeah, well, well, to be honest with you, like, your own, your own gym mate, Andy Lee, thinks you can't fight. So what's that say for you? Andy Lee? What's well, he, he, he said in a statement that's why you're Andy Lee. I don't Lee. care what Andy Lee said. That's, that's, well, he's your own gym mate, he sees you yeah. every day. This is about me and Gary, and I'm not going to be referring to him as fight because... That's your own gym true. mate, who's in the gym, just said you can't fight. He's, um, that's not true. Andy said that Chris is a world class fighter. No, he didn't. He said Spike or Andy, uh, Spike and Chris are both uh, Starbucks fighters. <laughs> Andy, lives, Andy lives with me. I know exactly what Andy thinks of Chris. And he knows I, I saw the statement. I just read, I read the statement. So it's no, so no disrespect to Andy Lee. Sorry. True, no disrespect to Andy Lee. No, he's Andy he's cracked, Andy, cracked Andy into the situation. And Andy has nothing but respect for Chris. Day in, day out. Andy knows what Chris can do. He's seen yeah. him more than enough fun in the gym. No, I think he backtracked it and said that then. But I think in the initial stage, he said none of them could fight. I think he backtracked. But he sees him at the gym every day. So anyway, I'm not getting involved. This between Spike and, and Chris, and uh, it's going to be a great fight. As I said, respect for both of them. Two great fighters, great fighters, and the winner will come true and fight for the world title. Spike, your trainer's doing what you're talking for you, man. This is embarrassing. Say something. Thank you, one gun Spike. What? Thank you, one gun Spike. You got me on that one, Gary. <laughs> Gary, your trainer's doing what you're talking for you. Speak up. You're, you're on a world stage now, man. This is what you wanted, right? I will beat you, Chris. Okay, you said that about four or five times now. I was getting old. You're missing your daddy. What's he up to these days? He deserved it, Jay, again. Speak up for yourself, Chris. <laughs> Did you copy me now? I'm going to go back and forth with the company. I like how you, I like how you kind of go for this super villain thing here with the whole, oh, my name's Spike. You need to understand, you're talking to the original bad guy here. I'm the guy, you know, my, my first 18 fights, I used to walk out to the ring every single time, being booed, hissed, sworn at, every single time. And, um, you know, I remember, I remember going over to Denmark and I had a, they snuck backstage and waited for me to come out of my changing room when I was making my way towards the ring. And uh, one of the two, both of them tried to spit at me. Luckily, it hit one of the security guards standing next to me. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm used to this role here. You're not the bad guy, you're, you're a pretender. There is no spike, you're just, you're just normal old Gary. And when you get into that ring, everybody's gonna see it. That's all I gotta say. I'm not trying to be the bad guy. The fans are on my side. Okay, guys, we're going to have a lot of fun with this fight, but as I said, there is a lot on the line in the world middleweight scene, and I'm really, really looking forward to two guys who desperately want and desperately need to win this fight. December 12th for the O2 Arena, as you know, tickets sold out. Five hours after we went on sale, we announced one fight. Spike O'Sullivan against, yes, yeah, sorry. I actually interviewed Andy Lee about uh, Spike's fight with Chris. And what he actually said was, he said that his fight with Billy Joe Saunders was a real fight. He said this fight was a hype fight. 
So he said, what do fans want to see? Do they want to see a real fight, talking about his fight with Saunders, or do they want to see a hype fight between Spike and Chris Eubank? That was in the interview he did with me. Okay, thank you, David. Um, all I will say is, and I'm not going to talk bad about Andy Lee because he's a lovely bloke and I know his manager's here, but this fight will be seen by millions of people around the world in front of 17,000 sold out arena. And um, that one won. So this is a, a great fight, this is a real fight. This is a fight with a huge amount of hype, but this is a fight with a huge amount of quality as well. Andy Lee's a great fighter, it's a great fight with Billy Joe, but, but this is all I'm interested in. And uh, taking the career forward of Chris Eubank Jr. on December the 12th, he has a real, real fight in front of him. Uh, thank you all for coming. Obviously, everybody here is available for one-on-ones as well. We're going to pose now for a, a photo. Firstly, a group shot of everyone, which will be very happy and smiling. And then for a head-to-head, -head, which might not be. Uh, we'll always behave. I just want to say one thing about this head-to-head. -head. Um, obviously, I've, I've seen in his last face-off that he kissed his opponent on the mouth. Um, you know, that is unacceptable in my opinion and because of that he's lost the privilege of having a face off with me today um you know if he wants to kiss men in his own time he can do that but this is my time now and uh, but, if he tries to kiss this man it's not the last kiss he ever has but, Chris, so uh man, we're, gonna but, just, we're gonna keep things simple but, say, but, man, no face -offs until come on come on there you go daddy running away come on your butler stand up and face me man come on Come on, let's have the head take Chris. Come on, don't battle it. Take your dad running because he knows that you can't have to be here. Get it out of the way and that's it. I've said what I've said. Butler. Come on. Come on, Chris. Too scared of you. Too scared of the wrong night.